All right, this will be a highly opinionated and somewhat preachy video. So if you disagree with anything, fight me in the comments. And if you don't like it, click the dislike button twice. So I'll start by saying that when buying certain tools, like for example, uh, pine sole soldering iron, buy it from authorized distributors, or even better, if you can get it secondhand in your local market, just make sure it's an authentic tool. Unless the manufacturer sells on AliExpress or Timor or Amazon, don't buy it there. Okay, yes, some of these Chinese knockoffs seem like a great deal, and sometimes they're even indistinguishable from the original, but here's the thing. They're usually lower quality, which ends up dragging down the reputation of the real manufacturers when those tools inevitably fail. And what's worse is they basically steal from the people who spent the time and money designing and building the genuine tools. And the problem is when companies lose money to these fakes or knockoffs, they go out of business, leaving us with no access to legitimate parts or support. Plus, it fuels the race to the bottom where everything becomes cheap and reliable junk. So yeah, you can save a few bucks now, but in a few years you'll be cussing the garbage pliers and blaming Gen Z for their goldfish attention spans and TikTok. Okay, now with the rant out of the way, let's look at some of the tools. So first thing you'll probably need is a multimeter. Now this is a very good uh, multimeter from Fluke, it's one of the reputable brands, but you don't necessarily need to start with the high-end stuff. Don't buy the cheapest multimeter you can find for like a dollar because the issue with those is it's not even safety or quality or anything. It's more of a re reliability. So how repeatable are your measurements and can you rely on it to give you a more or less accurate reading? And the issue with the low quality, cheap multimeter, you'll just end up getting frustrated because every time you measure something, you get a slightly different result. And you don't know if it's because of the multimeter or something is wrong with your circuit. So get a decent quality, um, ideally a name brand multimeter such as Unity or Unitrend. For example, I had the Unity uh, UT120A multimeter for three or four years and it works just fine, it gives consistent measurements, it may not be the most accurate or the fastest, but it allowed me to work on 95% of projects without any issues. Here's a note about the UT120 series of multimeters. Don't buy the B or C edition because they can measure current and the problem with multimeters with fixed leads is that you can easily flip to current measurement when you're trying to switch to something else and short circuit your device which means you can fry your multimeter or the board you're measuring of course in terms of safety they have much less protections but unless you're electro boom i think you'll be fine the next thing you will most likely need is a soldering iron there are lots of different options on the market, but you need to get the one with temperature control. It may not be the most accurate, but it gives you the ability to work on different applications and you won't burn your circuit board in the process. I'm using this soldering iron. It's a pine sole version two. It's fairly cheap as far as soldering irons go. I mean, depending where you are in the world. It has fairly reliable uh, temperature measurement. It's not as accurate, of course, as some of the higher end brands, but for 99.9% .9 of projects, this is more than enough. And there is a good array of different tips available for it. Uh, now, if you are getting this one, make sure you get the silicone cable that the company also sells. And again, don't buy this on AliExpress. Those are all fake. Just do yourself a favor, buy it from an authorized reseller. Also, I noticed some YouTubers holding the soldering iron like this. Don't do that. Obviously, it's not uh, heated right now, but develop good habits from the beginning. Hold the soldering iron properly. You don't want to get used to hold, holding it by the tip. And if it's ever hot and might have been just turned off, so you don't know if it's hot or not, you don't want to accidentally grab the tip and burn yourself. Now obviously if you're doing soldering, you will need solder. I won't get into a discussion between lead-free and leaded solder. There's 
plenty of uh, videos on that topic. Uh, get some solder wick. And I cannot overstate the importance of flux. This will save you hours and hours of headaches and annoyances when trying to solder dry wires or dry circuit boards without applying flux first and solder going everywhere. Make sure you get a decent uh, flux. And once again, buy this from authorized resellers. For example, I'm using MG Chemicals. AM Tech is another very good one. They don't sell that on AliExpress, and if you do see it, it's guaranteed fakes. And get some tip cleaning uh, brass sponge. It works much better than those um, wet sponges. You can always clean this or just get new sponge when it's filled with solder dust. Don't rely on those wet sponges because they drop the temperature of the soldering iron and sometimes you might end up getting chunks in the, of them stuck on the, on the tip of your soldering iron. When doing soldering, make sure you use a decent fume extractor. I know it's not the lead that's smoking, You're, you can't uh, boil lead with a soldering iron, it's just the rosin that's inside the wire, but you still don't want to be inhaling the fumes periodically, especially if you do any kind of regular amount of soldering. A good fume extractor can be expensive, but you can build a fairly decent one for about 20 bucks, and I already made a video about this actually upgraded it to uh, something better and I'll have a video coming up about it soon. Another very important tool you will need is nippers or side cutters. Here you have two options. If you buy good quality brand such as Engineer, this is a Japanese brand, very high quality, you probably won't need to buy a new one for the next 10 or 15 years. I bought this one about three years ago. And you can see it's still extremely sharp, looks basically new. No dents, no damage, works perfect every time. If you buy cheap ones, first of all, they will have this, they might have this misalignment issue. So you can't get very precise cuts. And secondly, you'll end up replacing them after a few months anyway. Get a breadboard and ideally with some kind of uh, power supply. It's just easier to power your electronics. And some jumper wires. You also need tweezers. Get the ASD safe ones that have a pointy tip to make sure you can grab smaller parts. Something else you will inevitably need is a power supply. Ideally, you should invest in a bench top power supply, but you don't have to get it right away. You can actually get away with something like this. This is a USB-C PD trigger board, and this button allows you to select between five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15, and 20 volts which would cover between 80 and 90% of your needs. Of course, it's not as user-friendly as a bench top power supply, but this costs $5, a bench top power supply costs $50. And believe me, you don't want to cheap out on the bench top power supply. At some point, you will inevitably want an oscilloscope. Um, I'm using a very cheap Hantec oscilloscope. 
it does most of what I need. Of course, it would be nicer to have one of those key site devices, but they're very expensive and I can't justify spending that much money on something I use only occasionally. And for surface mount work, you will most likely need a heat gun. Once again, there are lots of different options. So get whichever one works for you. Just make sure the temperature and airflow are adjustable. Some other things you might already have or buy if you need to. An X-Acto knife, some alcohol, and a toothbrush to clean off any excess flux from the boards once you're, once you're done soldering. Occasionally you'll need to attach something, so get a hot glue gun. Really any model will do. I got this one because it works off tool batteries and I made an adapter to be able to power it from my USB Type-C chargers. It's not very good because it drips when it's on, but for an occasional job it, it works. When it comes to multimeters, you can get the simplest one that doesn't have any current measurement and you can still measure current with it. Just watch the video I linked in the description. If you do get a unit with current measurements, make sure that the current measurements and everything else are separate. That way you don't accidentally short circuit your device if your lead is plugged into voltage measurement and the device is set to measure current. In terms of soldering irons, don't buy these. This is a pretty cheap portable soldering iron. It says 75 watts. It's not 75 watts. It has these interchangeable tips, but it's a pain to use. It takes forever to heat up and you have to keep pressing the button to keep it going. You'll just get frustrated with using these and it's gonna be a terrible experience for everyone involved. At some point you'll need precision screwdrivers and you can go for iFixit, which is a reputable brand, very good quality tools, or you can get something much, much cheaper. And it will have most of the bits that you need. The quality is not as good as iFixit. I think Linus Tech Tips did a comparison between these tools and whatever you can find on AliExpress or elsewhere. But to get started, this will do the job and they're fairly affordable. Well, this is my list of tools that I would recommend as you get started with electronics projects or repair. Let me know if there are any other tools that I might have missed or something else that you use that made your life easier.